Hi humans, it's Hannah with a quick yoga flow for spine flexibility. So right away we'll land in easy pose, chest is open, back is straight, shoulders draw back down away from the ears, and your palms can be facing upwards or downwards, whichever which way you choose, that's up to you. I'm going downwards today. And we'll begin to observe the breath. So the breath is going to be our tool throughout this practice and any practice really, um, to find some presence. So we'll drop into the here, and then now, maybe take really deep breaths to ground us. Start to clear your mind. And then we'll slowly start to draw small circles with the nose. So imagine the tip of your nose has a pencil or a chalk um, drawing against a paper or a board. And we'll slowly start to expand the circle so I suppose it's a spiral and it is going to eventually expand all the way to your full range of motion so that your neck is rotating at its full capacity meaning you're able to look all the way to your right all the way down all the way to your left all the way up and around and you just kind of keep going at this um, wider range of motion what we're doing right now is just giving the neck some mobility or creating some mobility in the neck and of course the neck is part of the spine and when you're ready we'll start to reverse the circle keeping the circle wide and again try to feel the motion try to stay in this wide range and really feel your neck move and stretch in certain parts and feel the motion rather than just simply arriving to your right looking up looking left just have a kind of more fluid motion so even if this is such a simple movement, we still want to move with intention. And taking your time, we're going to slowly decrease the circle or bring it in, making it a little smaller. There's no rush. Till we eventually come back to center. Keeping the eyes closed if you're okay doing that, we're going to interlace the fingers and start to rotate the wrists as uh, our hands are clasped together. And we're going to go in one circular motion. And then we'll start to reverse the circle and go in the other direction. Feel free to shake the hands loose if you'd like to and then we will bring our hands to rest next to us and on an inhale we'll reach the arms all the way up really active stretch and on the exhale we'll twist to one side trying to keep the back straight as much as possible trying not to collapse in with the shoulder or the chest and on the inhale we'll come all the way up again and then exhale twist to the opposite direction with each breath try to create space with your inhale so reach a little higher and then on your exhale Maybe twist a little deeper. Maybe your neck can look back a little bit further. Maybe your spine can find a wider range of motion. And you are more than welcome to go with your own breathing, go with your own inhales and exhales. During the final round, make sure that you even it out. And then on your next inhale, we will come back to center, reaching all the way up. And then on the exhale, we will drop the hands next to us. And from here, we will come onto all fours for a neutral tabletop position. So just a few quick cues for a tabletop. Uh, the wrists are going to be beneath the shoulders. And then the knees will be beneath the hips. Spine is neutral, eye gaze is to the ground parallel to me. And then on my inhale, I'm going to drop the belly, open through the chest, look up for cow. And on the ex exhale, sorry, I will round the spine, push the ground away and contract my abs for cat. Inhale, drop the belly, open through the chest, look up for cow. And on an exhale, I will reverse rounding through the spine and again, try to feel that, that motion. So we're not just arriving at cat and arriving at cow. It's like a wave-like motion where we feel the spine going through the, the movement as if it's one fluid motion on and on. Again, kind of like a wave. After your last round of cat cow, on the inhale, we will meet back in a neutral tabletop position. 
from my tabletop position, I'll start to set up my plank. Don't worry, we're not gonna hold it for too long. It's just a transition. So on the inhale, we'll hold up a plank and on the exhale, we'll start to slowly send the hips back into a downward dog, finding a little bit of motion and movement here, bending the knees, uh, pedaling the feet and just kind of stretch out your hamstrings a little bit to get ready for the next movement. So we will kind of go from our downward dog into an upward dog, but we will really round the spine a little bit like cat and eventually drop the hips open through the chest, look up. I'm just gonna keep my toes curled to make the transition easier. And then I will send the hips back again into a downward dog. We'll do this for a few more rounds. So round the back again, like a fluid continuous motion. I'm going to drop my hips open through the chest, look up for upward dog. And then very slowly, once again, slowly kind of arching the back a little bit and sending my hips back into um, an upward dog. So it's a little bit like a cat cow, but in a in an upward dog, down dog variation. And I'm just moving with my breath and um, just a few cycles of this. And from here, I'm going to send myself into a plank, slowly drop my body down. And on the fingertips, I'm going to push my body all the way up bending the back a little bit into this kind of low upward dog. I'll drop myself back down and slowly send my hips all the way back into a child's pose. I'm just going to take a few breaths here. Rest the shoulders from this little movement that we did. Slowly coming out of child's pose, we'll start to set up for camels. So bringing the knees beneath the hips, we'll come onto our knees. Feet can either be flat or the toes can be curled. That's up to you. Make sure that in camel pose, we don't drive the hips backwards. So try to keep your hips all the way forward, engaging the glutes and pushing your hips forward. Hands come at the low back, fingertips point downwards and elbows point behind us. We maybe start to look up a little bit with a very small back bend. And maybe if our body feels like it can do it, maybe we start to look up a little bit further towards the ceiling. Please listen to your body. You don't need to do it all at once. It could happen in stages. It could happen after a few sessions or a few times. So very slowly we'll start to come out of it and we'll reverse it. Keeping the knees where they are is recommended to create a kind of more space so that you can um, extend the back over the, um, over your body and to feel the stretch in it. And then we'll come back up. Again, try to keep the hips where they are. Re, um, realign yourself for camel and then start to maybe look back and maybe you're able to go a little deeper, but maybe not, that's perfectly fine. And then we'll start to come back out of it very slowly and come into a child's pose. Throughout this whole process, please pay attention to your breathing, pay attention to how your body feels. We'll come back up for the last round. Maybe we go a little deeper than we have, maybe not, again, totally fine. And maybe we can drop each hand to our heels, but once more, maybe not, and that's perfectly fine as well. We'll take a few deep breaths before we come up and come all the way back down into a child's pose to stretch the back one more time. From my child's pose, I'm going to slowly come up and I will send my hips down to the ground and come onto my back. So we're going to do a few supine spine twists. Supine literally just means on our back, so it's nothing fancy. So just align yourself, make sure that your back is straight, make sure that your body is straight, extend the legs out, and then we will bend the knees, bringing the feet off the ground. Extend the arms next to you in a T shape and on the exhale, we will drop the knees to the left, making sure that our right shoulder stays on the ground and maybe turn your head to look to your right. We'll take a few deep breaths here. You should really feel the stretch in the spine and you should feel the, the spine twist and hopefully with time, this does increase spine mobility and spine flexibility. Untwist the neck looking up and on an inhale, we'll bring our knees back up and on the exhale, we'll drop them to the other side. Once again, make sure that your left shoulder this time stays to the ground and maybe you turn to look to your left hand. Feel free to, of course, close the eyes throughout this whole process and just breathe. Again, look up and then on the inhale, bring the knees up and on the exhale, just drop them, extend them out long and we will start to settle in to our Shavasana.
So maybe go for a quick full body scan. Make sure that you're not holding any tension anywhere. Maybe tuck the shoulder blades under the back, opening through the chest. Bring the awareness back to the breath in case it wandered. Towards the end of the practice, I always like encouraging people to think of one thing they're grateful for. I think it's a really fun way to end a practice, and it's so small, but I personally think it has such a big impact. And for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to linger here for too long, but if you'd like to uh, pause this video and uh, just kind of lay here for a little bit, then please do so. But if you were here for a shorter practice, then... Thank you so much for spending your time and energy with me. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, then of course, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you would like to join me, you are more than welcome to in bringing the hands together at the third eye as we whisper, Namaste. Thank you for being here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe because that really helps me out a lot. And if you want more content, you can click either video on the screen and I'll see you in the next one.